Oh, so many headlines. And also, we are going to talk about Baron's birthday and some military things as well as some meshes in the brain. So stick with me and we'll get to it in just a minute. Hey everybody, this is Dad with Truthification Chronicles. Sorry about not having a video yesterday on Friday, but my internet went out Thursday night and it had been off and on all day. And then at night it was totally off and I couldn't do my research and I couldn't put anything together. So that's okay. I've got one for you here. So here we go. First of all, and I'm sorry I didn't get this out on the 20th, but the 20th was Baron's birthday. And so his mama gives him a nice little wish here on Twitter. And what do the idiots do yeah they have to come through and say all kinds of garbage I mean there's some very nice ones um, and you know obviously there were some good ones but I am amazed how many people are so insulting here may you fall far from the tree very 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 far you know it, it's just really can't spell your own son's name I mean really this is what, yeah, can't you wish him a happy day off Twitter? Seriously, what mom's not going to post her son's birthday on there? I mean, that's just what moms do, right? So I just, I, I don't understand why people were getting on her case about this. And she posted exactly the same thing last year, except it had a 13 in it instead of 14. And can you believe that kid's only 14 years old? Man, I hope he's finished growing because if he hasn't, you know, he's going to be like a giant. <laughs> so right now he, he is already, I think, as tall as his dad or if not taller. I mean, he's pretty close if he isn't. So anyway, um, I wanted to point that out to you. And I just thought it was kind of nice of her to do that. And then I thought it was pretty crappy of all those other people to be stupid about it. And then this was a Fox News article that was talking about Trump's wins. And I just wanted to point out to you that Trump has won about twice as many votes in most state primaries as predecessors Barack Obama did in 2012 and George W. Bush in 2004 during their respective party primaries. So just keep that in mind. Twice as much. And look what it says down here. The Trump campaign says he's even set an overall primary record, earning, quote, at least 4 million votes more than the previous record for total votes cast for an incumbent president in those same states held by former President Bill Clinton in his 1996 re-election campaign. Wow. So this is historic. And anyone who is looking at that cannot sit back and say, oh, yeah, we're, we can beat Trump in the fall. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And I know that a lot of the negative hype that's all around this illness going on, it's all because they want to make Trump look as bad as they can. They're afraid that he's going to win and he will win. We're going to get through this, folks, so don't don't despair. We're getting through this illness. Uh, I wanted to point this out to you because you may be experiencing this, and I wanted to let you know that this is kind of an official thing. YouTube and Netflix to reduce streaming quality to stop Internet from breaking because there are so many people who are social distancing right now and are on YouTube and Netflix. And so there's a lot happening there. And here's the article. You can go ahead and read that if you want. As always, I always put all the links down below in the description. You'll have to like click a little triangle or something to make it pop open. Or if you're on a like a laptop browser, then you just click the show more and it'll do it. They'll all be down there. You'll be able to get all those links down below. All right, this one, I wanted to point this out to you because this has a lot of different instances where people claim they're seeing tanks and military vehicles traveling through their part of the country. And there's there's several of them, but some of them, there's debate as to whether they are current or if they're old. And so just wanted to make you aware that you may see some videos. Don't always assume that they're current because, you know, the, the army does move things back and forth. I mean, that's pretty typical of it happening. So sometimes, though, 
I think, you know, these people are talking about it being more current that they're seeing it. So it is possible that that's happening. What does the military say? Well, here's an article by Military Times, and they pretty much address the issue of, are we going to head into martial law? And I thought it was an interesting article, but basically they're saying, no, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Right now, the states are calling up the National Guard, and it is possible that the president can take control over the National Guard if it's an extreme emergency. But it's not something that has happened at this point. I mean, it has happened in the past, but it hasn't happened with this president in this particular crisis and, you know, Marco Rubio had a tweet where he misspelled Marshall and spelled it this way instead. And uh, he said it was completely false that we are not seeing that and that's not what's happening. But this is a good article. It talks about it here. And yes, it is possible. It can happen. You have to kind of go past all these things. But yes, it can happen. And it was imposed by Andrew Jackson, imposed martial law within his encampment. And so, and Roosevelt, Franklin D. Roosevelt and everything, but we've already discussed on this channel, the Posse Comitatus Act. And so it is possible, but it is pro not probable at this point. Of course, Joe Biden says, yeah, I'd call him out now. And so I think they're trying to avoid having that happen in this administration, but it is a possibility if there is a problem. And of course, there's the Insurgency Act that if there is an uprising against our government, yes, they can take them and uh, bring them in. But again, I don't think that's the route Trump is going to take unless things you know, get heated. Right now, it appears that people are being pretty good about self-quarantining and uh, social distancing. Um, not everybody, obviously not everybody is smart, but most people are starting to um, agree to that. But it, that also poses a problem and a question, have we given up our freedom? You know, does the government really have the right to tell us that we can't go out, that we can't move around freely, that we can't peacefully assemble, which there is a lawsuit, and I didn't bring up that tab, but there's a lawsuit in, um, oh, I can't remember what state it was, New Jersey maybe, that they're complaining about not being able to assemble, which, you know, is one of our rights that we have, the right to peacefully assemble. So I don't know about that. Uh, Richard Grinnell, of course, is our acting DNI right now, the Director of National Intelligence. And so he made this, well, there was this statement here by Benjamin Haddad, and he says that as Washington falters, Beijing is moving quickly and adeptly to take advantage of the opening created by U.S. mistakes, filling the vacuum to position itself as global leader in pandemic response. Is this America's Suez? And so he comes back and he says, the one who started the fire should never be praised for acting like a firefighter later. I think that's a brilliant way of putting it. That's excellent. And this guy down here says, touche. Then up here, of course, you know, at this time of crisis, the one who is in charge of our entire intelligence community should not have the time or inclination to be tweeting right now about anything, let alone about policy issues. We have a bright red line between policy and intelligence for a reason. Go back to work. Well, yeah. And then he comes down here and he says, uh, completely disagree. When China pushes propaganda, U.S. officials must speak out clearly. Asking U.S. officials to stay silent is odd. Social media is how we communicate with the public. I'll keep doing it. Good for him. Yay. <laughs> I thought that was good. And I'll leave the link to this. I know this is from the We Are The News site, but uh, you can go through and find the tweets yourself if you want to. If you didn't see this clip uh, from the press conference earlier today, well, I'm recording this on Friday night. So on Friday's press conference, it was really good. I laughed when I saw it, when I heard him say this. He said, I'd like for Secretary Pompeo to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department. Okay, now Pompeo, of course, took that with a smile because Pompeo understands what's going on. But uh, somebody in the group here did not. Now, this is the WhiteHouse.gov version. If you find, I think, the Fox News, maybe you can see Fauci better over here. But I'm just going to play it so you can see it. 
And, and one thing, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo is extremely busy, so if you have any question for him right now, could you do that? Because you know what I'd like to do? I'd like him to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department, if you don't mind. I'd like to have him go back and uh, do his job. So does anybody have any questions? Please. He's not happy about Trump saying and, and he's staying. One thing. He, you know, he put his head down and everything. Like I said, if you watch the Fox News one, you can see it better. But, oh, my, he was not happy. Well, that pretty much tells you where Fauci's at. He's one of those people who have, has been in there for a long time. He's a career person and a career official, as they like to call them. Well, essentially, that just means that he's um, part of the bureaucracy, and he doesn't want anybody messing up that bureaucracy because he's got a place in it. Well, speaking of places, guess what? WikiLeaks has an email thread on him. Yep, Tony Fauci. There he is. I thought you and the secretary would enjoy knowing that Tony Fauci was just named by Government Executive Magazine to be one of the top 20 federal government employees of all time. Oh, goodness. And that was sent uh, to Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills. And then, of course, Huma passed it on to H. And H, of course, says, please do letter of congrats. She sent that to Robert Russo. And he said, will do. So just wanted to point that out to you. I thought you might find that interesting. This one, I had to laugh at the researcher's response. because She says, hey, Jack, at Jack. And for those who don't know, that's Jack Dorsey, who is the head of Twitter right now. Of course, he may be stepping down soon. Wake up. It's time for Twitter to step up, show some global leadership, and push back on the Chinese Communist Party spewing misinformation and sick propaganda on this platform while we are in the midst of a global pandemic. And so this researcher goes, please divorce your husband and run away with me. <laughs> okay, now I'm not for anybody divorcing, you know, their husband and running away with somebody else. I'm not for that. But I just thought it was kind of funny how he said that. He just really likes her and what she's been saying lately. She's been doing a good job. And then um, I wanted to show you this. AG Barr ordered U.S. attorneys today to contact lo local and state law enforcement partners so officers are aware federal employees must be able to perform their official duties and get to work in cities, states where there's restricted access to slow the spread of the illness. And so here's the letter that he sent. But basically, it's like, hey, we've got work to do. We still have to be doing stuff. So you need to make sure that we've got clearance and they have to show their personal identity verification, the PIV cards, and explain the nature of their work and travel. So they have to have it. And the cards do have a photograph of the employee and list the federal agency for whom the employee works. So that's to allow them a little more freedom because some of these places, and if you live in a big city, you may already be under this, where you are not allowed to really go out. I mean, you might be able to go out for a run and then straight back home. You're not supposed to drive anywhere. Pete Buttigieg's city, South Bend, has uh, no drive. Uh, you, you can't be out unless you're going directly like to the store or to a doctor or to uh, some place. A place of work or something. You have to have a purpose for being out and about, which I think is in some ways a little sad because I find it very fun and interesting to just take a drive and get out of the house for a little bit and sit in the park maybe just to get some fresh air. I mean, away from everybody, but what does that hurt? I know if you're in a big city, it's probably totally different. I, but I did want to point that out to you that that letter is going around and then the UK, evidently, hey, good job, UK people, because as they were planning on leaving Brexit, they stocked up on a whole big bunch of food supplies. And so they're doing good. Yay. Nice to know there. Good job, UK. It, you know, in a lot of ways, I think it's very interesting how so many things are in place that have made it possible for us to actually survive doing this type of shutdown. You know, a few years ago, you could not have worked from home. I mean, that's, some people could, but the majority of people were not able to do any work at home. You know, the internet was 
something that you had, but it was not something that you used a lot. You wouldn't be able to like access uh, so many documents and so much of the work you had to do. I mean, kids are doing e-learning. That was not possible a few years back. So that is in place, you know, you have that and you have like Netflix and those different things to keep people entertained. And you also have uh, food supplies and it's very interesting. And by the way, I just want to remind you that, you know, all those people that used to laugh at us preppers and they were like, oh, you guys are so stupid for doing that. Eh, nothing's going to go wrong. They're not laughing so much anymore, are they? <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. So something to think about. Let's go on. I thought this was an excellent question. Serious question. Can anyone explain how Chinese virus is racist, but Russian collusion is not? Oh, boom, ba boom. That's a really good one because, you know, they talk about Russian collusion all the time. Why is that not racist? But, oh, Chinese virus is racist, even though it originated in China. Ugh, crazy, crazy times. Well, anyway, speaking of China, Amazing Polly posted this, and I do want to thank Let Freedom Ring, who is at C-J-H-I-L-R-E-D, and uh, at, on Twitter, because... He or she, sorry, I don't know which, sent me this, and I appreciate you doing that. So we talked about this guy in a previous video, this Charles Lieber, who has just been indicted. Yeah, the guy that was working with the Chinese university and getting paid $50,000 a month for his work with them. And of course, which university in China was he working with? The one out of Wuhan. Guess that one. And we talked about him in a previous video. So guess what? He is the one who invented micro mesh that is injected into your brain to control its circuits. Very interesting. Here's the article. You can go to that and you can see about it. She always comes up with really great stuff. I wish I had more time to watch her stuff. And speaking of a video you might want to watch or you might not, okay, I'm going to give you a warning on this one. If you are a tender-hearted person, do not listen to this video. It's mostly, there. I mean, there's some visual, but it's a very unclear. You're not going to be able to see much, really. But you are going to hear. It is supposedly a recording of John Podesta and a child. And it is just very disturbing. I can't say 100% for sure that this is Podesta. It kind of sounds like him. It very well could be. The content is disturbing. It's about, it's two minutes long. But again, if you're somebody that is very tender hearted, please do not listen to this. It, it is very, you know, tough to hear this. Anyway, um, but it's important that this goes around. And I know it's been out there for a couple years. I first heard it about two years ago. And I know it's been making the rounds. But there are a lot of new people, especially people who aren't familiar with the 17th letter of the alphabet and what is really going to come out about all these people and what's on Wiener's laptop. Uh, you just might want to listen to it. And it, it'll wake you up. But it is something that, again, you have a tender heart. Please don't. I'm just going to tell you that. You'll have nightmares. You'll, it'll make you sick. So anyway, um, this is something I thought you might find interesting. CrowdStrike stock soars as sales nearly double results beat expectations. And that was put out March 19th. Hmm. Yeah. Got to kind of wonder what's going on with CrowdStrike. What's their role in all of this? Because they have a very nefarious record. So, hmm, just wanted to let you know on that. This one you've probably seen on the news that some of these uh, senators, after having this classified briefing, then dumped a bunch of stock. Well, it's going to be very hard to prove this. I, I know, I understand, but it's going to be hard to prove that the stock was dumped because of the briefing. And from what I've seen, I understand that they dumped stock, but, you know, most of these people, when you're really rich, you're not handling your own finances. And that's what this one, um, let's see, what was Kelly Loeffler 
is claiming that she doesn't, you know, tell her her person who's in charge of that. She doesn't tell them when to sell things and they just sold them. So again, it's going to be really hard to figure it out. Now, of course, the press is really focused on the Republicans. Richard Burr, now him, I don't know. I think he's a snake. I wouldn't say one way or the other on him. He's not been doing the Republicans much favor. Uh, he's not been doing the Republicans many favors these past few years. So, um, you know, I wouldn't put it past any of them. I'm not going to say they are guilty. I'm not going to say they aren't. I think that's what they've been accused of. The, you know, evidence right now, I don't know that it's strong enough to convict any of them. Uh, it's just a matter of seeing the, the stock market reports. And if you're going to go that route, you know, how about all these CEOs that have been dumping stock lately? There have been a ton of them. So I'll leave this article. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of information, but uh, be aware of that if you're not. And then I wanted to point out, this is Malik Obama. This is Obama's half-brother. And, you know, his Twitter feed is filled with some interesting things. If you've not seen, this is Ellen DeGeneres. And she is, look, I saw the picture of her. It was like, whoa, she looks awful. I mean, she looks like she's really, really old. And she's wearing odd outfits and putting out odd tweets during this whole time. And somebody said, if you look at the shirt really well, it says, run forest. You know, like Forrest Gump, run forest. Uh, and then this pose they thought was really strange and they found like a, a type of tarot card that had the same pose, basically. And I saw one of her videos where like right in here you know, on the window behind her, there were two figures that were dressed in like military outfits running, you know, past here, like in tactical gear, uh, running past there in one of them. That was really strange. And I, he says, who is this old woman? But then he focuses in on, uh, you know, this right here, the adrenochrome, and starts dealing with it and makes, he's making like a ton of posts. Just the last few days, he has made a whole ton of posts about this. And so he's talking about it and you got to wonder if the supply is cut off or I've also heard that maybe the supply was tainted, um, you know, and that's why well, you got all this garbage here. But then, yeah, so he made several tweets you might be interested in if uh, you want to pursue that idea. So the storm is coming, eh? Mm hmm. So I just thought it was interesting. I mean, he's got tons of them on here. So. Yeah, we're going to get real woke now. So thought I'd share that. And then being from Indiana, I got to show you this one. Indianapolis area methamphetamine and heroin trafficking organizations dismantled. This was March 19th. Yeah. And they ended up having 35 individuals that they uh, got on this. And they possessed... Um, not only the GUNs, but 22 pounds of methamphetamine, heroin, fentanyl, and approximately $70,000 in drug money. Wow. Whoa. And then it has a list of the ones that were charged. So if you want to go through and see if there's anybody you know. Nobody I knew was on this list. It's really nice when that happens. <laughs> I would be very disappointed. Uh, this one's a fugitive. They evidently, yeah, they didn't catch them all. They kind of scurried away. And that's what I've told you all before when you're talking about arrests. If you have a rat infestation and you try to pick them off one by one or a few at a time, lots of them will escape. And if they happen to be wealthy rats that have land ownings in various countries, they can be hard to find and catch. So you got to set a trap and get them all confined to where they are. And you know what? The travel is confining them. They can't even hire these private jets anymore. So they're stuck. And that makes it a whole lot easier to catch the rats. So I'm just saying. And speaking of rats, yep, here's like the daddy of all rats. 
and look at the address of this road that they're on yeah do you think that's a coincidence i think not and yeah that's in wuhan so i'll leave the link to this down below you can read more about this pharma tech here and uh, see what they're talking about it's solutions for gene therapy but um, just thought i'd i'd leave you that one but the the number of the address just seemed like yeah that's not by coincidence and to leave you with something good as we go it's this right here from kellyanne conway big jump for president trump in the new abc poll 55 percent of americans approve of the president's management of the crisis compared to 43 percent who disapprove so yeah and last week it was reversed so i think as this plays out it's going to play in trump's favor it really will because especially if they've got a couple of um, different medicines that are now starting to be tested and that they are finding um, some positive results from them that could be huge and make no mistake that it's going to be very big in the future one of the things i want to remind you of with this illness is that the number who have actually died from it in the United States, while it does keep going up, is really relatively low compared to the same time period for the other countries. Like Italy, their first case that was confirmed was about the same time as ours. And if you look at the number of people who have passed away, big difference. And so I really think that what we're doing, the steps that have been implemented, are working and they are going to produce a better result what amazes me are the number of people and even Laura Ingram I saw it on one of her tweets it's like they want to know a specific date how much longer is it going to be how do we know that I mean unless you're clairvoyant or you're into the time travel theory that Trump has been to the future and knows what's going to happen and came back <laughs> you know you don't know and you just don't know for sure when it comes to an illness like this now they're doing everything they can to mitigate it. it it's not going to last forever i really think it'll be just kind of phasing out pretty soon i think a lot of it has been over hype and again i think the reason for that is because they're trying to make trump look as bad as they can just because they can't stand the idea of him winning because they know if he wins there will be arrests so they're fighting back in the only way really they have left they're running out of ammo folks they really don't have much left so anyway that's what i've got for you on this one i want to thank you for stopping by and i'll see y'all later